This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the latest Kindle Fire. This is the Kindle Fire HDX, and certainly, obviously, it's going to be Amazon's best Kindle yet. A lot of improvements inside, we're going to look at it now. So here it is, the latest Kindle Fire on the block. This one's called the Kindle Fire HDX. Uh, they, they went with the HDX name because, well, this is super high resolution. It's even compared to other tablets on the market, 7-inch size, this is 1920 by 1200 pixels. So that's bigger than 1080p resolution. Uh, that's a higher resolution than your 1080p nice flat screen TV that you might own at home. Of course, that is the same resolution as the Nexus 7, so it's not the only kit on the block to have that resolution, but it's nice to see, especially in something like a Kindle product, because, well, probably you're going to be doing a lot of reading on this. If you're going to buy a Kindle product, you're probably into the Amazon, Amazon ecosystem, their books, and also their Prime Instant videos, which we have showing right now. If you're watching video, you want a sharp picture too, don't you? This is the 7-inch model. There will be an 8.9-inch model, just like there was last year for the HD model, uh, that one's going to be coming out mm, sometime by November, hopefully. Going to be a bit more money, but otherwise, looking at the same features, same CPU, that one will have an even higher 2560 by 1600 resolution, which matches the resolution on the 2014 edition Note 10.1 and the Nexus 10 tablets as well. But back to this guy right here. A lot of improvements under the hood. The operating system now gets a name. They actually call it Fire OS. And they they have improved it. You know, I always thought that this was kind of a half-baked thing, the, the way the Kindle Fire operated. We used to have these giant icons that were very resolution ugly. We still have giant icons here, but now at least they're sharp. They're nice looking. You get a mix of content, your applications that you've used, any content you've looked at. For example, there's a record cover there of an album I've been playing. You get suggestions underneath because Amazon always loves to sell you things. Now, if you pick the web browser, it doesn't have any suggestions. That's Amazon's web browser. They call that Silk, as always. But you might want other search applications and location-based applications, so it's suggesting something there now. And then we have something that looks more familiar to people who are used to using Android and even iOS tablets. As you drag down, you get all of your application icons over here. So it's a bit more intuitive UI. It's also a lot faster. Kindle Fires have never been real fast navigating the UI. And I've always wondered if that was because they were not exactly using cutting-edge CPUs inside. Or if it was the operating system. Well, now they've done a lot of changes to both. So it's hard to say who was ever to blame before. But this is finally something that's nice and zippy and fancy. We can switch between all of our tabs very quickly get through our content, go back home over here, and go to books next. See, it's all real quick, and right now it's defaulting to showing me stuff on the cloud. As ever, Amazon has plenty of cloud services. Now, that doesn't just mean like you know, Dropbox style putting your files up there, though you can do that kind of thing too, but it means that they're hoping, of course, that you've bought a lot of content from them, a lot of books, so everything that you buy and haven't even downloaded will always show up as the cloud tab, and you can look at what's actually on device by tapping on device. You can go back and forth. So it makes it very easy to get stuff that you purchase with them or you put on your Amazon cloud drive. Like I have music up there, and this is not stuff I've even purchased them. I've just put that up there. So all this stuff is actually on the cloud. I don't have anything that I've transferred to the device. This is telling me right here, go ahead and use your USB cable and put some on there if you want. But that doesn't stop me from playing something. And listen to those speakers as always. Amazon has done a, a wonderful job here. We have Dolby Digital Plus audio and stereo speakers that are on the back. Now they're up here. Pretty easy to see through the glossiness on the top bevel over here. And there is a bevel, so notice even if you put it on the table, it's not going to be flat against the table, the speakers. So your, your audio won't be muted, which is very good. So definitely some of the best audio you're going to hear on a tablet here, better than some notebooks, in fact. And I expect the 8.9 inch will probably be a little bit louder, given that it has a little bit more room for speakers, though who knows. Anyway, very good for watching movies. My test is always using my exercise, Exercycle indoors, which is not the quietest machine in the world. And a lot of laptops I have to plug in external speakers. With the Kindle Fire HDX, I don't have to do that. It is loud enough, clear enough, and full enough that I can hear it. We take a look at the back some more here. Soft touch finish, not immune to fingerprints, does get greasy. You can clean it up with the damp cloth just fine. So we have Amazon's usual unique unique sense of style here. It's kind of interesting. We've got bevels all the way around clearly because they wanted to have the bevel for the speaker so they wouldn't rest on the table. And to make it easier to get to the back facing controls here, this is our power button right here. On the opposite side we have our volume controls right there.
So when you're holding it, there's a little ridge. You can feel it. Now I have to say, these get the award for being some of the most tactile buttons ever. They really dip down. You can really feel them. However, I still tend to have to turn around and look because I'm just not used to having my controls back there yet. But if you grab around your finger, you'll feel them. And it's pretty obvious which is power and which is volume. You won't make that mistake because one little depression you'll feel here versus two for the volume controls. And logically speaking, if the speakers are up top here, your up volume is going to be towards the top. On the side here we have a micro USB port for charging and for copying stuff from your PC to the device. Just use a standard Android tra file transfer. This is running Android Jelly Bean underneath that heavily, heavily customized operating system that you probably wouldn't even recognize as Android. It's a little weird because this has an up bevel. When you plug in the cable, it's going to stick up at an angle. Don't worry, your port's not bent. That's just the way it's designed. On the other side we have our 3.5 millimeter combo audio jack, headphone and a microphone. And there's a front facing camera up top 720p and that is your video camera and you can download Skype and install that if you want. To get to all of your settings, nothing too much has changed there. You swipe down, you can turn your auto rotation on and off, quick access to brightness. Very bright display by the way. We have this turned up because we have a whole lot of ambient light in the room, but I think in most cases nobody's going to be running this in maximum brightness unless you're outdoors. Speaking of outdoors, speaking of glare, it does glare. You can see if I move it around, it's a glossy display. That's always one drawback when reading books. Some people might still prefer the Kindle Paperwhite if you just mostly read books because, well, it's a lot easier in the eyes and there's no glare. You can see we have quick control of our music playback over here. And here's Mayday. If we tap on that, this is not exactly instant, but pretty close. Within 15 seconds or so, you can get support online from Amazon folks. And it's one-way video chat. You can see them. They can't see you. Don't worry. And they can hear you. You can hear them. So if you're thinking about giving this to mom or grandma or grandpa and they're really techno noobs and you don't want them calling you all the time about how to use the fire, they can hit that Mayday button and bother somebody else. And if you need access to all settings, right here we have them. Amazon account. You can actually enter your Google account in here. There's contacts and calendar application. There's an email application. There is no Gmail application by default. Display sound keyboards. You can choose from different languages here. We'll take a look at that in fact. Here we have our language selection. You can also choose keyboards and Bluetooth keyboard languages separately if you want. So you can see we have English UK, English US, French, Spanish, Italian, Japanese, Simplified Chinese, Portuguese, and German. So for those of you who are hoping to read books in other languages, for example, you can go ahead and do that. As always, we have our text-to-speech fe speech feature over here as well. And the rest of it, not as exciting. We do have parental controls here, and this has the kid mode. So if you want to give this to your kid and you don't want them mucking around on certain websites, reading certain books, or using certain applications, you can go ahead and do that. For those of you who are trying to decide between the similarly priced Nexus 7 2013 edition, here it is, taller and narrower. As always, Amazon goes for a kind of wider feel, a bit more like a book kind of aspect ratio, so there's a difference. Both going to have the same resolution display. Uh, other than that, there's a whole lot that's different too. This runs obviously full Android over here, very vanilla Android. It doesn't have any, any customization whatsoever, certainly not like the Kindle Fire does. But that's a topic for another SmackDown. But just for those of you who want to see what the difference is physically, there it is. Like most every tablet on the market, the battery is sealed inside here. No removable door to access that battery. Amazon claims 11 hours of mixed use time and 17 hours if you're just reading. And pretty much that has been on target. We've been managing about 10 and a half hours of mixed use, including watching Amazon Prime videos, reading magazines, reading books, that sort of thing. So what's inside? It's pretty cool this time. Usually Amazon goes with something like a, you know, I won't say a cut rate CPU, but one of last year's slower models. In this case, we have cutting edge stuff here. We have the 2.2 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 CPU with the Adreno 330 graphics. Currently, that's about as fast as you're going to get. If Snapdragon 800 is up there competing with the Tegra 4 and Samsung's latest Exynos Octa CPUs very fast. Adreno 330 graphics means you can play some nice games on this. We hope that we see uh, some more killer 3D games on here. There's a whole lot of casual games on the Kindle App Store. And the, the killer 3D games, other than Gameloft titles, not so much. But expect that to change now. It has 2 gigs of RAM inside. Again, that's pretty much standard for a higher-end tablet or smartphone these days. So that's plenty of RAM to run 
any programs that you want. It's available at 16, 32, or now 64 gigs of storage as well. The 16 gig Wi-Fi only is going to cost you 229. The 32 gig is 269. If you want to go up to 64 gigs, $309. There is no expansion slot on this device, so you, you might want more storage inside if you want to load your own content. I think for a lot of people, though, they are going to rely on cloud services, either putting their own content up on Cloud Drive or using Amazon's own Prime Video and books that you buy, magazines that you buy from Amazon directly on there. That's the with offers price, which means you're going to see an ad on the screen every time you wake it up, and which you can ignore, or you can get real excited about it if you want. It's up to you. Turn it off and turn it on, and there's your offer. So I was pushing a movie right now. You can you can either tap here to watch the trailer, or if you don't want to see that, you just slide the unlock. There actually is a link to offers up top. So actually, if you saw an offer, something you were interested in buying, you can tap over there and see. Sometimes they have coupons, for example, that are good on Amazon. That might be something you actually want, or a book that's on sale, or an accessory, or something like that. There will be Wi-Fi plus 4G LTE models. There's an AT&T model and a Verizon model, and that's going to add $100 to the price. Available all the same storage capacities, just add $100. So you're starting at $329, for example, and going all the way up to $409 if you want the 4G LTE model. All of them have dual band Wi-Fi 802.11bgn with MIMO, so you get good Wi-Fi reception on these. We have Bluetooth on board as well. Works for things like Bluetooth keyboards. As ever, this is a Kindle product. That means you don't get access to the Google Play Store in here. You do get access to Amazon's Kindle App Store. Obviously, the bookstore, the video store, the magazine store, the you name it, they sell everything store on Amazon. Uh, so for those of you who have a, a big investment in Google Play applications that you've paid for, I don't mean the free ones because they'll probably be available to here like we have Evernote. You can get the Weather Channel, all sorts of things like that. But if you paid for a lot of applications, uh, keep that in mind. Now, probably I'm sure the clever folks out there are going to find a way to root this and then maybe get the Google Play Store in here. It's actually pretty easy to sneak some of the Google applications on here. You can see I've done that, and oh, shame on me. I've even side-loaded the Nook application, which works just fine on this, by the way. But I haven't gotten Google Play working so far. If you want to learn more about that, go to XDA Developers or AndroidCowboy.com. That, that fellow has done a lot of work towards getting some of the Google applications on here. But you can see that I've got Chrome, which doesn't come on here, just so you guys don't get confused. Google Play Music, Google Play Books, Google Play Magazines. I've sideloaded all of those. And how do you do that? It's not, not too hard at all. Actually, you have to get a hold of those APKs, which is the installation files. And then we go to Applications, and then you see apps from unknown sources. Just turn that on so you can sideload programs. Then get yourself a file manager. And there's a couple of free ones available on the Kindle store, and you can use ES File Explorer. I use Andro File Explorer. Use a USB cable. You copy some of those APKs that you want to install. Find your SD card, which is just what it's called. It really doesn't have an SD card. And then look for the folder where you put it, like downloads would be a, a wise place to do it. And you just tap on one of those to run it and install it. And that's how you're going to get applications sideloaded on here. Gmail did not come on here either. I did add that along with Google Play services. Gmail works fine, by the way. That, that, that's not a problem whatever, whatsoever. Google Play movies, books, all that stuff, that works so you can get content in those ways. It's just the Google Play Store for applications that right now you don't have access to, at least not without rooting. And in fact, here we are in Google Play Magazines right now. And there's a magazine that I've downloaded, so you can see it does actually work. So fun to have alternatives. Of course, you have access to all of Amazon's as well. And those are available up here under Newsstands. So anything you tap on, you can download, and you can go ahead and read. And We'll start that one downloading. Magazines are actually a lot bigger than books, so that's going to take a while. Meanwhile, we'll take a look at books. And Stephen King's latest book. Beautiful screen. Has whisper sync, as you, whisper sync as you can see, so it can sync between Kindles. I also have a Kindle Paperwhite. I've been reading that book on the Paperwhite, and it knows that I've advanced my reading since I last used this device. So, very fast. Very nice white neutral pages, very clear sharp text. The super high resolution IPS display is just perfect for that. And even if we go off angle, other than seeing reflections, viewing angles are very good on this. So certainly a lovely experience for reading for those of you who like reading off of LCDs versus e-ink displays. And now our magazine has loaded here. 
nice speeds, beautiful looking screen. And you can do it in landscape mode if you want as well, but you know the text is going to get kind of teeny there. It makes more sense if you have a big 10 inch or larger screen to do that kind of thing. Obviously it has an accelerometer, so it's going to rotate with you. And you can double tap on it to fill the screen if you want just like that and we can bring up navigation for the magazines as well that that stayed pretty much the same we got bookmarks here and here's our browse feature we can go through all the pages of the magazine and browse quickly so obviously this has been a very nice fast fluid device so far and also pretty stable as well and that's borne out by the synthetic benchmarks it scored very nicely 20,382 on quadrant which puts it up there with other snapdragon 800 cpus and any of the fastest cpus available for mobile devices today 3d mark ice storm the extreme test not the basic test 16,657 that's very good. So this is a fast device. This is the first Kindle Fire that we've seen that hasn't been kind of sluggish and unimpressive in terms of underlying specs. For the web browser, we have the Silk Browser, as Amazon calls it, which is just a fine WebKit-based web browser. And obviously, I've cited loaded Chrome as well, but I have nothing against Silk. Fluid, it's fast. It plays HTML5 video. And we'll look at a video, in fact, review of our Note 10.1 2014 edition. You can see they're lit up right now because I've just touched them. And the so there you go. Embedded on. video plays nice fine. And just for fun, again, I, I, you may or may not do this depending on how savvy you are, but I did sideload YouTube so we can actually... And this is, if you happen to sideload the YouTube player, you'll get the same experience that you do on Android devices, and that works just fine, too. Holy cow, your keys are missing and your Silverado's been stolen. So you Complete with ads. So you get the idea, and yes, you can turn it over and play it in landscape mode, too. That's for the more adventurous of you. But as you saw, it's not too, too hard to actually sideload that stuff. And now we're going to test out Asphalt 8, a really beautiful 3D driving game. Very demanding one at that to see how it plays. Certainly, if it can do this, it can do Angry Birds real easy. And that is beautiful looking. Getting a little nitro. Driving a little dirty. Well, they know about a shortcut, I don't. Anyway, it's playing absolutely beautifully. Visual effects on the screen, the whole nine yards. Looking great. So that's Asphalt 8 on the Kindle Fire HDX 7 inch. So who's the Kindle Fire HDX 7 inch for, or for that matter, 8.9 inch? I would say, first off, size wise, if you're mostly reading ebooks, some reading magazines, doing some web browsing, probably the 7 inch is going to work for you. If you watch a lot of movies, you're going to enjoy the 8.9 inch more probably. I know I do. It's just a lot more immersive when you get a bigger screen. Also, magazines can be a little bit easier to read without having to zoom into reading view to actually read the actual article instead of just look at the pretty pictures in the magazine. And who is this device for? Well, you know, there are plenty of 7 and 8 inch tablets on the market right now. This is one of the least expensive ones. So is the Nexus 7 2013 edition. And as ever, with the Kindle Fire products or all the Kindle products, this is really best for those who would like to consume Amazon services. And there are a lot of you out there, those of you who have Prime accounts, so you get a lot of free streaming movies and TV shows. Those of you who have a lot of Kindle books like to buy from there magazines and magazine subscriptions and so on because it's super easy to consume on here and honestly the experience especially when watching videos on this is very nice and turnkey you watch something if it's a tv series you're ready to go to the next episode it's much more intuitive on this than it is using the web browser on your pc go figure if you have an ios tablet well that's going to work too because there is amazon prime for ios but for those of you who have android you know that they've never made an application for that so if you're really into prime this is the way to get it now, for those of you who need all-around tablet with access to the Google Play Store, Google Maps, the GPS, a rear-facing camera, obviously, 
this wouldn't be the product for you. Again, this is more for those folks who want a real nice, fast device with a great screen, but still have a primary interest in consuming Amazon stuff. So that's the Kindle Fire HDX. It is available now, as I said, starting at $229, but uh, you know how it goes when a new Kindle model comes out. They're, they're selling out like crazy, so you're probably going to have to place an order and wait, but eventually you'll be able to get one easily, and they're in stores like Best Buy, too. So if you want one, go get it. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.